Hello, hello, hello. This is Teresa Sedario, your Jersey Mama, and I am on a video making mood today. Why? Because I'm, I'm preparing for Christmas Eve dinner. So, earlier I sent out a video on how to prep, right? Well, I took all that stuff. I put I put a picture under that video on what I made. It was garlic, celery, onion, carrots, and I think that was it. Garlic, celery, onion, carrots, parsley. Don't forget the parsley. Hi, everyone. I'm glad you're hopping on. Well, I decided I was going to show you how I make my mother-in-law's stuffed galamat. God rest her soul. It was, it's one, you know, one thing about when you're with your, your grandparents and your seniors that are in your family and they're making food, watch them, take notes, ask questions. I never asked question. I never asked why my mother-in-law used certain stuff. Didn't, didn't, didn't need to. I didn't think I needed to. I figured it's good enough for her. It's good enough for me. It's good enough for our tradition. This is the way she's been doing it. I'm not going to rock the boat. However, so, with that being said, whoever likes stuffed galamad, it's one of my favorite Christmas Eve dishes, along with the shrimp scampi that we make, because I love the gravy or the sauce that goes with it. Now, I'm going to see whether or not I can switch this around, because I want you to see what I did. Okay. This is the part of the seasoning that I put in the, uh, with the breadcrumbs for the stuffed galamad. You have your parsley, your carrots, your celery, your onion, and you mix it with olive oil, okay? This is the gravy. What you do is you take this and put it, use it in another pan, and she used stewed tomatoes. Don't know why she used stewed tomatoes, but you know what? The tomato sauce that comes out is unbelievable. It gives a little bit of a sweeter taste, and then when you drop the galamad in there, it is unfreaking believable okay this is the galamad now what i did was i took the fins off of the galamad on the side i cut them in tiny little pieces and i and i put it in with the uh, the onion garlic carrots parsley and celery just to give it flavor and then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and in here i have breadcrumbs Eggs, two eggs. I have like two cups of breadcrumbs, two eggs, and uh, cheese, locatelli cheese. Very, very important. Use the locatelli cheese, folks. It makes the dish unbelievable. Now, I'm going to scrape that out later. I just want to turn. Okay, I'm back. Hello. And so what you're going to do is you're going to mix that up. Now, that bread stuffing needs to be moist. So if you have to add a little bit more olive oil or another egg, that's fine. Because what you're going to do is you're going to stuff it in that calamari or the calamari, as most people say, calamari. Then what, but when you stuff the calamari, don't stuff it all the way. Because what happens is when you cook the, when you place the uh, calamad the, in, the, um, in the sauce, it expands. So you don't want it to come out of the, calam the calamad into the gravy, okay? And how you're going to keep that from doing, uh, from, ex you know, spilling into it is you're going to take toothpicks and just like a little little weave, like you're ready to sew a hem. Remember, who, who still sews hems or who still knows how to sew? A little bit, right? So anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to take the toothpick and you're going to put it through the top. If you fill it halfway, that's fine because it will not, you know, it'll fill up to the top. I cooked the gravy, the sauce first. In the sauce, I also added, not only was that mixture that you saw in the pan, you also, what I did was I put the tentacles uh, from the galamad in the sauce. So this way it gives it the flavor. Okay, the flavor is unbelievable. When I tell you, bless the mother, oh my God, you will absolutely love it. So then that's what you're going to do. When it's time, I'm going to pre-stuff everything. Tomorrow, when the gravy's warming up, I'm going to put the galamad in, in the sauce. So this way, it, do, it doesn't cook too much. You don't want it rubbery because it only takes, a, it, it doesn't take that long because the gravy's already cooked and it doesn't take that long for the, the calamad to cook because it's, it's a seafood. It's very thin. You know, if you have fried calamad, you know, if you cook it too much, it's too hard. Well, guess what? That's what will happen to this. So that's why I will do that last minute. So anyway, that's it. 
you add, you know other than you add your seasonings to your sauce um, you know your garlic powder your your salt pepper um, your parsley your basil don't forget to add your fresh basil that's it that's all it is to take to, I mean it's more time-consuming to sit there and stuff the galamad than it is to actually put it in the sauce and cook it so that I had to share with you I hope everybody um, got what I'm saying and hopefully one day you'll be able to venture out on your own and make your own galamad. But you know what? Drop a, a one here. If you're new to um, seeing me on Facebook, drop a two if it's a replay that you're seeing. Drop a three if you're, don't even drop a three. Tell me where you're from. Tell me where this is reaching. What state am I getting? What country am I getting? Share some ideas with me too. Tell me if it's the same way your grandmom or your nonna uh, made her stuff galamad. Okay, so everyone have a good day. Bye-bye.